Welcome everybody to year 10 of my channel. We have made it 10 long years on YouTube today. And just thinking back to 2010, wow, what a decade this has been. And I could not have done it without all of you guys. So once again, from the bottom of my heart, thank all of you guys, especially all the OG people who's been with me for 10 plus years or the people who's been with me since the beginning when I started this channel and as of right now I do believe I am the only one left from 2010 still doing YouTube so that's crazy when I think about it but yes new year new camera new style let's go this is my list of the top 100 movies of all time and we're gonna start with number 100 which is North by Northwest I'm not gonna to say too much about North by Northwest because I will be reviewing this movie at some point this year but all I'll say is it's hit one of Hitchcock's finest movies I mean come on man you can't get no better than North by Northwest everything about that movie was great. Number 99. Terminator 2, Judgment Day. One, if not one of James Cameron's best sci-fi thrillers. We all know, we don't have to say much about this movie. Just saying the name alone, people are already popping clapping their hands. So, yeah, Schwarzenegger at his finest right there. Number 98, Footloose, one of the classic movies from the 1980s, and probably one of my favorite dance movies made, okay? Kevin Bacon is always great. John Lithgow is amazing. Everything about Footloose was great. That 2011 remake, however, nah. Number 97, The Graduate. Oh, yes. This is a very underrated movie right here. Very, very underrated. If I remember right, this is uh, Dustin Hoffman. That's the star in this movie. He's a very young Dustin Hoffman, too. So if you have not seen The Graduate... Ooh, you're in for a treat. That is one of my favorite movies I think I've ever seen in a long time. All right, number 96. Is E.T. the Extraterrestrial. Now, I've only seen this movie three times in my life. That, um, it is a good Spielberg movie. Okay, but it's... It's not my favorite one. That's why it's this low, uh, high on the list, to be honest with you. I'm pretty sure I got better ones down towards the lower end of this video. But E.T. was still a great movie. And it was still an original idea that technically launched Drew Barrymore's career. Technically, when she was a little girl. Number 95. The Shawshank Redemption. Oof. This was a... This was a damn good movie. <laughs> a rough to watch, but it was a damn good movie. And if you have not seen Shawshank by now, from the 1990s, bro. What are y'all doing? What are you doing? Number 94. Two thousand one, A Space Odyssey. Wow, this was good. This was real good, especially from a movie from the nineteen sixties, late nineteen sixties. I think it was sixty eight, if I'm not mistaken. And my God, what a good movie to sit there. It was really good. I was really shocked, man. Uh, my goodness, watch this movie. Number 
Back to the Future. My boy Steven, I'm pretty sure if you're watching this video, you are loving this right now. Back to the Future is a great movie. Probably the best movie of the 80s. I can't wait for the 4K movies to come out. I kind of hope they get an individual release so I can get all three of the cover arts to celebrate its 35th anniversary this year. So, happy 35th anniversary, Back to the Future, because you deserve it. And you're one of my favorite comedies of all time as well. 92. is Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Another classic 80 movie, 80s movies. All the 80s movies are seem to be on this list right now, so it's kind of funny that almost all of the movies I've seen from the 80s is making this list because, let's just be honest, the 80s were the best decade. The best decade. You know why? Because I was born in the 80s, baby. So, the best was born first. Okay? So, yeah. All joking aside, though, but... Ferris Bueller's Day Off is simply a great comedy. Matthew Broderick, man, one of my underrated actors of all time. Number 91. The Shining. Oh, yes, indeed. A very, very intense movie with Jack Nicholson. Probably his best performance in years to be honest, and it's probably his most memorable role he's ever taken, besides Joker, but he lit, He is the pinnacle of this movie, he live, eats, live, and breathes by this movie, so yeah, if he didn't work in this movie, I don't think the movie would have worked in and of itself. Number 90. The Big Lebowski. Oh my god. The Big Lebowski is an underrated movie. Probably one of the best performances by John Goodman I think I've seen ever. So John Goodman never disappoints either. But the character he had to play in this movie it was something of that of joyous. And ne ne can't forget that performance by John Goodman though. You really, really can't. I really did enjoy The Big Lebowski. Number 89, Groundhog Day. Now, I remember seeing this movie in theaters when I was young. I remember this movie, and I remember all of the, the days he had to keep reliving and stuff like that. And that stood with me after all these years. And Bill Murray. Bill Murray was the best part about this movie. Obviously, no, no events about it. Bill Murray is Technically, the OG kings of comedy, to be honest with you, so I was not going to be disappointed with that. Number 88. is The Lion King, one of my favorite Disney animated movies of all time. Next to The Little Mermaid, but Lion King stands the test of time. 25 years later for me, so... Yeah, Lion King, baby, you can't, you couldn't fuck this up, but they did. Number 87. Brokeback Mountain. I finally was able to watch this. This was a rough watch for me, because for one, I'm straight. And two, I had to watch two guys screw. So that was kind of uncomfortable for me. But the story outweighed all that, and the acting outweighed all that. So if you have not watched Brokeback Mountain yet, this is probably one of Ang Lee's best movies he's ever done. Number 86. Air, uh, 7, as I should say. I don't know why I said that. 7 is one of the best crime dramas and thrillers Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman's done in a minute I love this movie first time I watched this movie I'm like you know what we gotta buy that shit and I did and I still enjoy it to this day number 85 
Airplane. How ironic. Airplane. One of my favorite movies that ever would have to be G's soundtrack in it. So, <laughs> yeah. Every time I hear certain songs, I think of Airplane. You know? It should be Saturday Night Fever, but I saw Airplane first when I was a kid. I didn't see Saturday Night Fever until I was well in my mid-twenties. So, yeah. Airplane is a classic comedy, and the classic spook comedies done right how they should be done and how they should be done airplane baby give it to me number 84 reservoir dogs reservoir dogs i love it i love this movie it's quentin tarantino baby old school quentin tarantino and tarantino's really never changed Every time he gets older, his movies get more and more wiser with time. So, if, <laughs> if the Once Upon a Time was his last movie, I'm going to say no, it's not. But if it is, I'm sorry to see you go, bro. <laughs> sorry to see you go. Number 83. Bonnie and Clyde. This is the Bonnie and Clyde that has Warren Beatty in the film. The old school Bonnie and Clyde. This one is the best Bonnie and Clyde for me. So, yeah, I'm not going to go into too details about that movie. But if you have not seen this version of Bonnie and Clyde, do yourself a favor, go and watch it. Warren Beatty is one of my other favorite actors that still needs to get more work nowadays, but I think he might be retired. So, I'm not really sure about that. But, yeah. Number 82. Beverly Hills Cop 2. The best sequel in the franchise. And the best sequel, one of my favorite sequels ever made, to be honest. I watched this movie so many times. So, so many times. My review is somewhere up on this channel. Just go ahead and find it. Have a good time watching that. But yes, Beverly Hills Cop 2, baby. Number 81. Two thousand one's Ocean's Eleven. Yeah, that's right. The first good remake Steven Soderbergh's made. And probably one of my favorite remakes of all time lists, too. I'm going to have to make all these lists. Now I think about them, I'm going to have to make these lists. Because remakes get a lot of flack nowadays, but when they were done right, like this, and able to get the trilogy out of it, yeah, let's go. <laughs> Number 80. The remake of The Raid. The, not The Remake, The Raid. <laughs> the Raid is a classic Indonesian film. I'm saying it's a classic and it's not even that old yet. But it will be. By the time I'm in my 40s or 50s, it probably will be a classic. So, yeah. Best example of being stuck in one spot ever. And Dread did take a little bit of influence from it, which was not a bad thing, because it made Dread that much more better watching it, too. So, yeah. The Raid, baby. Indonesians know how to kick that ass. For 79. Inception. Ironically, the movie that came out the year I started YouTube. So, yeah, me and Inception are the same age right now. We're both going on 10. Or, it's going on 10. I'm already at 10. But, yeah. Christopher Nolan, Bullet Boy. Oh, my God. Seeing this movie in the theaters. Didn't know what the fuck was going on by the end of it. So, I had to go watch it two more times. And I've watched it maybe like 10 more times since. Number 78. Nineteen nineties Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. 
OG once, baby. Jim Henson work at its finest. The more adult of the Ninja Turtles franchise. Because after this, you will never see like an adult Ninja Turtles ever again. This is probably the most mature Ninja Turtles film of all time. So, yeah. Have yourself a field day and go watch the OG Ninja Turtles. Sequel was good too, but this was better because the sequel got watered down because parents complained that it wasn't too kid friendly. It's always the parents that fucks up these movies, man. I swear. Number 77. The Mummy Returns. Ooh wee. This was a good movie right here. This was good. Unfortunately, I didn't miss this one in theaters when it came out, unfortunately. But I saw it on cable right at, as soon as it hit. So, not cable, uh, pay-per-view. Remember when those were a thing? <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm old, baby. But yes, Mama Returns, classic. Classic Steven Summers film. Number 76. The original The Poseidon Adventure from 1973 with Gene Hackman in it. And another all-star cast movie. And as I always said, the originals are always the best. And I hold my candle to that shit. If you have not seen the original Poseidon Adventure, you're doing yourself a disservice. Go watch that. Have some fun watching it too, because it is a classic. Number 75. The Blues Brothers. Original classic, baby. I love the Blues Brothers. I love everything they stand for. Oh my god, I love their Saturday Night Live skits and all of that stuff. But I do love both movies. I'm the only one that likes the sequel, probably. Um, the sequel should have been R-rated, but I get what they were going for. So I kind of understand why it was PG-13, but still. The original one with Carrie Fisher in them, that's hot shit. Number 74. Mrs. Doubtfire. Rest in peace, Robin Williams, man. You were the last thing I expect to be gone in this last decade. But, oh man, here we are, like almost five, six years later, and you're you're just not here no more. It's weird, you know. You were the best thing about this movie, literally. Besides James Bond, which ironically, he'll be James Bond in the next two years, too. So that was kind of funny. Uh, Bond before he was Bond. Good times. Sally Field was great in this movie as well. One of my favorite movies of my childhood days. Number 73. The original... Ghostbusters okay you gotta love how everything is now the original because of what Hollywood be doing to these movies now don't you think <laughs> cut it out man cut it out but yes 1984's Ghostbusters classic fucking classic man I can't wait for Ghostbusters Afterlife man you have not seen Ghostbusters 1 and 2 what the fuck are you doing right now don't watch me just yet Pause this and go watch those movies. Okay? 2016 can... Ugh. With that. So, yes. Number 72. The Predator. Oh, I'm sorry. Predator. What am I thinking? No, you see? Now when I say The Predator, I'm thinking about the bullshit from last year. No! 1987, baby. The year I came in this bitch. That movie. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Okay. That handshake. 
Yes. Yes, please. Number 71. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Great, great sequel. I love this movie. I, oof. I love it. I did not miss this trilogy in theaters at all. I had a good time with this movie, especially this movie. Okay? Can't beat it. 70. The original Point Break. Yes. 1990s, man. Keanu Reeves, the late Patrick Swayze, which was someone we also lost last decade. Unfortunately, he's been gone now almost 11 years. It sucks. I miss the Swayze, man. We all miss the Swayze. But, yeah, he is the best thing about this movie next to Keanu Reeves. So, yeah, baby. Number 69. Magnum Force. The best Dirty Harry sequel. Legit. But Magnum Force was the best one. Because you literally have a guy dressed like a cop killing people. Awesome. Number 68. Godzilla. King of the Monsters. Not the 1956 one. I am talking about this year's Godzilla King of the Monsters. Because the original is still called Gojira in my eyes. But this is the best sequel of setup I think I've ever seen. Okay, It wasn't just, oh, let's get to the next movie. No, 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 no. It was putting everything together for Godzilla and Kong to face off this year. And it works. It works really good. And I can't wait for Godzilla vs. Kong in a couple of months. Because now, instead of March, it's now November. Why? Because people like everybody else that doesn't watch YouTube did not go and see this movie. And it is a damn shame. Anyways. Number 67. American Pie 2. Again, another one of my favorite comedy sequels of all time. American Pie 2 is still my favorite American Pie next to the original one. It's the one I've watched the most. It's the one I need the most in my life. And it's the one <laughs> I get the most laughs out of. American Pie was the coming of age story in my, thick, my decades growing up. And part of my childhood, you know. The last part of my childhood. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Number 66. Godzilla. Uh, what the fuck? 66. Con Air. Con Air is a classic Disney movie. <laughs> Nicolas Cage and John Malkovich. Amazing. Uh, amazing. Watch this movie if you have not. Number 65. Fast Five. The best Fast and the Furious film in the franchise to date. Okay. Ironically, this movie came out on the 10th anniversary of the Fast and the Furious franchise. And they're like, you know what? It's the 10th anniversary. Let's reinvent this bitch. And so they did. And it was and it was glorious, baby. Glorious. Somebody called Bobby Roode. Number 64. A Night to Remember. One of my favorite Titanic films made. Yes, if you have not seen the old school A Night to Remember... You are missing out. Yes, the boat still goes down in one piece. This was way before they realized the boat sank in two pieces. Okay, so give the film a break on that one. 
the story was what mattered here, and it mattered the most. Number 63. The Road Warrior. Watch that. Number 62. Christine. John Carpenter at his finest. Christine is a classic and watch this movie. Just, just watch this movie. There's a lot of 80s love in this video, so... Don't worry about that, but I got I got you covered, 80s fans. I got you covered. Number 61. Planes, trains, and automobiles. Like I said, 80s fans, I got you covered. <laughs> I got you covered. Great comedy. Rest in peace to John Candy as well, because another comedy legend gone too soon in his lifetime Steve Martin yeah classic Steve Martin right there baby number 60 We're entering the 90s a little bit Home Alone <laughs> Home Alone yeah enough said Sorry, Disney, your Home Alone will not live up to this. So I can't wait to see how bad you're going to screw this up. Because Fox have already screwed Home Alone up three times now. So it can't get no worse than that. Number 59. The Empire Strikes Back. When Star Wars was good, Star Wars. You hear me, Disney? When we have a trilogy, that's not so inconsistent. I mean, I like all three of these new ones. But they're not my favorite of these trilogies. The core six are still the best six. Sometimes, and I have to stand by that sometimes. Number 58. The Fugitive with Harrison Ford and Tommy Lee Jones. Not the TV show with Superman. But still, this was a great movie. Harrison Ford did his thing. Tommy Lee Jones. The best 90s actor so far back then. He, this is when he made a lot of good stuff, you know. Nowadays, Tommy Lee Jones is like probably almost retired, but every now and then he'll pop up in a movie every now and then, getting older and older and older. But you, you, you're still my man, Tommy. You're still my man. Number 57. The Born Ultimatum. The best way to do shaky cam. Because nowadays, a lot of people use shaky cam and it's not good at all. At least with this, it matched the action that they were doing and they were shooting. So, yeah. Number 56. Airport 77. My favorite of the airport franchise. My personal favorite of the airport franchise. I love this movie. If you have not seen any of the airport films, you are doing yourself a disservice. Go and watch these movies. Great disaster films from the 70s and 80s. Great, great times. Number 55. Star Trek Two: The Wrath of Khan. We're done there. Number fifty-four. My personal favorite of the franchise: Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. 
the first one I've ever seen in the franchise. I've never read the books, so I just decided to give this movie a watch. And of course, it's my personal favorite because of course I've seen it first. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. It's my favorite one. Number 53. Logan. Probably the definitive pinnacle for the X-Men franchise, to be honest with you. And a breath of fresh fresh air that this franchise needed. Number 52. 1978's Halloween. Classic John Carpenter, yet again. This man never disappoints. Okay. <sighs> Classics. Number 51. Speaking of a classic. Alien. Yes, indeed he do. Alien was a classic horror film at its finest. And... Probably one of the two best films in the whole entire Alien franchise. So that's not saying very much for all of us that we that knows this franchise. So yeah, fifty. License to Kill. License to Kill is the sixteenth film in the James Bond franchise and. My personal favorite of the James Bond franchise. I love Skyfall. I love Casino Royale. I'm probably the only one that liked Quantum of Solace. <laughs> Spectre, not so much. But License to Kill was the one that took it serious. This was the one, this is the, the first one that earned that PG-13 rating. And James Bond's been rated PG-13 ever since this movie came out. Of this movie. The best Bond movie. The best Bond movie theme song. I'm sorry Adele, you, you, you do not beat Gladys Knight. You, you, no, no. Number 49. Toy Story. Yep. When Steve Jobs made Pixar, what was the first thing he decided to work on? This lovely classic right here, baby. Thank you, Steve Jobs. Not Disney, but thank you, Steve Jobs. Number 48. Blade Runner. Blade Runner, baby. Classic 80s film. We're going right back into the 80s a little bit here. <laughs> Number 47. if not the best, second best film in this franchise, Mission Impossible Ghost Pro Protocol. The older Tom Cruise gets, the better these Mission Impossible films get, which each Mission Impossible sequel, we're at six of them now, they get better and better and better. I think he learned since Mission Impossible 2 each one of these movies has to get better. Mission Impossible 2 was obviously the weakest one, and that was because it was John Woo. But once 3 came out, yeah. Good stuff. Good, good stuff. Number 46. Duel. Steven Spielberg's first film, probably one of my favorite Spielberg films. I love this movie. I even got the Blu-ray. Finally, I got this movie on Blu-ray. Hell yeah. Number 47. 